Okay, so today's lesson is about handling farm animals. Just for interest's sake, this first slide shows us how that um, sheep can be handled the proper way. So in none of these images is the sheep in any time under stress or is the animal poked or prodded or the leg being um, pulled or the tail being pulled in any way. So the animal is handled with as less stress as possible. So that's basically what this entire um, video is about. So the first thing, the reasons why we would, would want to handle animals. This is important. Usually they ask this for like a two or three mark question. So some obvious things. The first thing is to collect eggs from chickens, um, deworming your animals. So to make sure that there is no parasites on the inside. Then dipping to get rid of parasites on the outside of the animal. Dosing is almost like deworming, but we are dosing the animal against um, other types of organisms as well, parasites, internal parasites, not just worms itself. Then when we want to tag their ears so that we can label them so we know whose animal is whose, we must handle them physically. Then trimming the hooves, this mostly apply to uh, things like um, horses, but sometimes if uh, a cow has a hoof problem or maybe even a pig, their hooves can be trimmed to treat any inflammation and so on on their feet. Then also for transportation purposes, obviously they will have to be handled to be loaded onto a truck. Then for milking, cows have to be handled for pregnancy testing so usually if you want to know whether your animals are pregnant or not this is actually very important for especially your stud um, breeders because they want to know whether the uh, best cows are actually um, pregnant and whether they've taken and whether the bull is actually doing its job then also shearing of sheep we have to physically handle them then selecting breeding stock sometimes we have to physically separate animals from one another and put them in different camps so then we'll will have to um, handle these animals then also for vaccination and lastly for weighing so the weighing generally is very important especially with your Okay, I think pigs as well, your cattle and with your sheep, you want to weigh them, and especially the cattle, because again, the farmer gets a specific price for the carcass or the meat per weight or per kilogram. So it's very important for the farmer to actually know how much an animal weighs. Then on the right side, they talk about the incorrect handling of an animal. So here are three main things um, that also coincides and I have comes from the previous lesson we had. The first thing is do not approach animals from the blind spot. We talked about this last time for the main reason that causes the animal to um, see you suddenly and then it, um, start, it gets startled and it runs away. So it's not always a good thing and if they don't run away they will actually turn on you and maybe want to um, hurt you in defense. And secondly, no sudden movements. If you approach an animal, make a soft noise or something that they see you coming, but if you stand next to an animal very, very quietly and then suddenly move or suddenly make a sound, they will bolt. Then thirdly, no shouting or hitting the animal. That is definitely uncall uncalled for and not needed. Then lastly, signs of incorrect handling from the animal side. What do they usually do to show you they feel threatened or hurt or they don't want you in their space. First thing is pinned ears. So when they put their ears as close to their skull as possible, um, they actually have this menacing look on their face. So it will tell you they are angry or um, afraid or they, they, they feel threat threatened. Then secondly, they will start pawing or pacing the ground. It kind of looks like they're impatient, but actually they're threatening you to go away. And thirdly, when they make loud noises, snorting noises, they're also warning you and lastly swishing tails so again usually like when a dog swishes its, its tail we think well the animal is happy for a dog yes but usually in other animals like your agricultural animals they switch the tails when they're uncomfortable not because they're happy okay then there are proper animal handling techniques so this slide is for all the different animals we looked at so it's your ruminants and non-ruminants in a mixture so in your textbooks they do do it specifically for each individual animal but this is the main idea the main thing you have to remember for all the animals firstly approach the large animals from the side sometimes if we approach them from, from the front they will stop and not want to move um, or they could possibly turn around and run away so the best one is to approach them from the side so they don't know exactly what you want to do you want to actually approach them from the, the shoulder joint so again that is that tipping point that it will either make them move or stop so if you come to the shoulder they usually stand still because they don't know what you want to do with them 
Then secondly, I mentioned this, make soft clicking noises or a soft whistle when approaching the animal so they know you're coming, make yourself known to them. Thirdly, when inside an animal's territory, walk along the perimeter. And in a sense, this means uh, if you have to go into the, a crawl where an, a couple of animals are standing or into a paddock, keep to the fence. That's what I mean with perimeter. Keep to the fence so that in the event that the animal wants to storm you, you can actually escape without harm. So the best thing is if you're unsure how the animal is going to react, stay to the fence. Then also use a spotlight to get pigs, sheep or cattle to move. This is actually very nice, especially if you have a dim area. So if this is inside a building and you have an open doorway somewhere or okay, they say a spotlight, but if you want them to move from one area to the next, they generally move from a dim area to a bright area. So this is nice to get them moving without actually shouting at them or forcing them or using a prodder or anything. Um, but again, this doesn't really work for the outdoors because it's, it's sun, sunshine everywhere. So the best thing, if it's indoors in a barn or something, and you want them to move from point A to point B, make sure the place is a little dimly lit, not a lot of light, and shine a very bright light at the end of that tunnel or the end of that um, barn where you want them to go. They will literally follow it because they think it's a way out. And also don't use a prodder if the animal has nowhere to go. For obvious reasons, if the animal can't escape, it can hurt you or it can hurt itself. Then also be cautious around protective mothers. This is definitely important for any animal. You don't want to be between a mother and a baby. Then also a pig should be herded with plywood. So we actually use wood pieces, push it against their um, bodies to get them moving. They will go in the opposite direction. And usually two people on either side of the animal should walk and do this. It's just the quickest way of getting them to move from point A to point B. Then lastly, chickens must be carried right side up, not upside down. And they must be held by their legs so that the legs, well, so they can't try and run or scratch you and so on. So I know most people that carry the chickens by the wings, or underneath the wings, or they carry them by the legs upside down. But again, this harms the animal and can also cause them to, well, to be in distress. And again, if you stress the animal, if they're laying chickens, they will not lay eggs for you. So the best way is to carry them with care, put them underneath your arms, just keep their legs together. And if you carry them underneath your arm, you're technically pinning their um, wings together. So it's the best way there. Then with transportation, main thing to remember here is injured animals will fetch less income. So when you try to sell at the slaughterhouse, they will you get, less, get less money for them due to bruising on the muscle and meaning poor quality meat. So again, the rule of thumb is here, never transport injured animals and also make sure, especially if you're an owner, um, that the truck driver is careful, that, do, that the truck driver does not, um, how can I say, does not drive without caution because if they do stop too quickly or take a turn very um, quickly, they can harm the animals. And this is bad for the owner because the owner then will get less money for the meat or less money for the carcass eventually when they do kill the animal. Um, but because again, it causes the muscles to bruise and no butcher wants to buy bruised meat. So what to do to avoid this? Avoid overcrowding the animals in a truck. Because again, if there's too much animals in the truck, they can't move and they will bump against one another and hurt one another. Secondly, transport animals of the same species, gender and age. This is important because again, if you put bull and cows together, the bull will obviously want to mate. He will try to mount the cow and could hurt, hurt himself or hurt the cows. Same species, if you put, this picture is actually incorrect, if you have a sheep and pigs together, um, they do get stressed because again, they not they don't understand each other's behaviors, so they could start a fight. Same thing with different ages. Your older ones usually want the younger ones to move away, so it can cause harm to all of them. Thirdly, avoid transporting pregnant animals for obvious reasons. The baby could get, if the animal gets um, hurt, you could lose the baby if you want to sell your pregnant animal. And also no sick or injured animals, which we just discussed. Then prevent slippery floors. Why? Because again, the animals could trip and fall or slip and fall and again, bruise themselves. Then also closed truck must be used to avoid exhaust fumes. So again, if the exhaust fumes go into an open truck body, this can cause monoxide poisoning or some kind of poisoning of the animals. And then you get to the slaughterhouse and the animals are already dead. It depends on how bad the fumes are and how far the, um, the truck has to travel. 
Then lastly, chickens must first be placed in crates. So if chickens are transported, they must be in individual cubicles, like crates. Um, the most I think you can put in, depending on the size of the crate, is usually like three chickens or four chickens. They should not be sandwiched in there. They should have space to move. Then lastly, a couple of things. The love of you guys, tools to be used during animal handling. So what they do is they give you a picture and ask you to identify this tool. Or they give you the name of the tool and ask you what is it used for. So the first tool we have here on the left hand side is a rope. So the main function of the rope is to restrain an animal so that it does not move too quickly or so it can stand still so that it can be handled. So in this case, this picture shows how the rope is being used um, throughout the body of the cow just to allow it to stand still. Then on the left, oh, sorry, the yeah, left bottom side, we have the nose pliers, also to restrain the animal. So in this picture, please focus on this picture because there's another tool that looks very similar. But in this case, the I'm going to say the mouth of the pliers are not sharp. It has dull round ends, and those ends are what enters the nose of the cow. And you can there's usually a um, string attached to it. So again, the the head of the animal can be turned with the nose pliers. Usually it does not hurt the cow, but again, if the farmer is tugging on it, it can possibly hurt the nose. And again, why do they use the nose is because it's the most sensitive area of the cow. So the cow will definitely listen to the nose pliers so as not to hurt itself. So it's mainly there for the restraint as well. Then on the right hand side, we have a holding or sorting pen. And usually these pens are made out of individual, I want to say gates or sections. And these sections can actually be separated from one another and rearranged if you want to um, put it somewhere else. So it's not a permanent structure. You can actually use these railings and so on if you want to move and place them or make a camp for yourself, a temporary camp somewhere else. So it's just there. It's also a big physical way of handling these animals, sorting them out and directing them in the area you want them to go. Then also in a few other tools, we have the head clamp, also for restraint on the left-hand side. So let me just indicate with my mouse, these two areas, this door opens to this side, this door opens to that side. The animal comes in here. In this case, the animal can be weighed with this machine. So it's got, you get the weight of the animal. Then as soon as they've been vaccinated or you're done handling them on the inside, then the doors can be opened. Animal moves through, but only with its head. And then you just close, and you use this handle, you just close it, and you clamp literally the head in place. So now you're straining the animal even more. So maybe if you do need to clip its hooves or do something else, you can do that because the head and the horns is out of the way. So this, in this picture, is the head clamp area. And then when you're done, you open it again, and the animal just comes out. Then on the right hand side, at the top, we have a whip used to herd the animals, not, not mainly our cattle. And then the bottom, we have a cattle prodder. So this is also important for herding the animals. So again, it causes a mild electric shock. And the best place to shock the animal is on its um, hindquarters, which is the pretty word for its butt. So basically, on its behind, you would prod it, and this will get the animal moving if for some reason it's immune to the whip and doesn't want to listen to it. So they cannot ignore the cattle prodder. In the last slide, other tools that can be used on the left hand side is the immobilizer. It's also there to restrain animals. And this one usually is used either when the animal, especially bulls, have to be castrated or when they have to be branded, especially when they're being used to brand. So I just want to show <laughs> or demonstrate this long piece goes into the anus of the cow or, yeah, or the cow or the bull, doesn't matter. And then also an electric shock is sent through the body of the animal. So it's a bit more intense than your prodder because now the electrical shock goes through the entire body. And what this does is that the animal can physically not move. Usually one of its legs turns outwards and then literally it can't move its muscles because now all the nervous, the entire nervous system, I want to say is like short circuiting. So it can't move, the animal can't move its muscles. So it's standing still. So that's what the word immobilizer means when to immobilize an animal. It has to stand still, it can't do anything, and then you're allowed to brand it or castrate it or do whatever you need to do. So usually why they do this is to enable or to ensure that the branding does not take too long. 
because again if the animal is struggling and kicking you and so on you're trying to brand them you can do more harm to the animal than say when it is standing still and you can just brand it in eight seconds and you're done so it's actually there to prevent further pain and cruelty to the animal then we have in the middle a halter again to restrain the animal or lead the animal uh, on the left hand side at the bottom or sorry the right hand side at the bottom we have the clippers mainly for shearing your sheep I was told today that most people don't use this anymore. They like the electrical shearers, but for the test purposes, they do give these, this picture to you guys. So this refers to shearing sh the wool of sheep. Then at the top on the right side, we've got the bedizzo, and this is actually for castrating. So again, this is what they use mainly to castrate your cows, not sheep, because this is too big. You can't get underneath the body of the sheep to actually castrate it. So this is mainly for your bulls. For sheep, we normally use um, the plastic bands. So the bands will be put around the testicles or can be put around the tail to dock the tail. Okay, so as far as I know, yeah, that is the last slide. So that is this lesson.